with reports of uh, more kidnappings in Zamfara State. Uh, of course, the security challenges still across the nation. Uh, we, of course, have been joined this morning by Yahoo Zagetso, a security analyst, to give us more clarity on what the situation is over there and what must be done. Good morning, Mr. Getso. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for having me. Thanks for joining us. All right, so um, help us uh, give us, if, if any, updates on what uh, may have happened in Zamfara. The reports of more kidnappings. A few of, uh, people were reportedly also able to escape uh, these kidnappers. Uh, but what can you share with us? Well, uh, from the information we have available, uh, which has also been confirmed by the uh, Zamfara State Police Command, and other security operatives around, as well as the national level, is the fact that uh, the bandits have uh, entered one of the colleges at uh, Bakura local government, uh, precisely. That is uh, the um, community where uh, Senator Ahmed Rima Bakura came from. Uh, they entered into the community. There is a, a school that is a tertiary institution, a uh, college of uh, either agriculture or whatever, precisely. So they abducted uh, uh, some people and uh, at the same time killed some in the process. So part of the abduct abductees, uh, there are students and there are also four teachers. So there is yet uh, any information to ascertain the actual number of people that have been abducted that is among the students. But uh, for the uh, teachers, it has been confirmed that four teachers were abducted and then some other uh, number, uh, on a certain number, uh, have, have been killed. So the issues of this didn't come to me as a surprise uh, because uh, uh, government have been saying that we are aware of the location of the criminals. We know their hideouts, uh, knows where these guys are because uh, in the northern city, not only in the northern city, in Nigerian city. All right. Uh, we seem to be having challenges with the uh, network, uh, the connection from Mr. Getso's end. Uh, hopefully we can reconnect with him and have a smooth uh, discussion. Uh, we, uh, uh, Mr. Getso, can you hear us? 99.9% .9 of the abduct, uh, of the families uh, are citizens of all the communities where they are conducting their activities. So all the traditional leaders, uh, all the other uh, social structures, inclusive of the religious leaders and all the philanthropists, knew about the locations of all these guys. Uh, yes, of course, either there is a politics in what is happening or there is no politics. The reality is, why can't the government deal with the situation decisively uh, since the criminals are known? So, well, it's, it's even more shocking, you know, gets into... Uh, except that uh, the criminals are known. If they, you, like you've mentioned, they are members of the community. People know them. They probably also know the location. You know that these uh, abductees are taken to. Um, so, so can you paint you know a clearer picture of what you mean by if politics might be involved? Um, what does that mean? Is that showing a reluctance of the government to act because you know they know each other? You know politically. Yes, of course. They know who are the, inclusive of uh, finances, because we, we have had Lai Mohammed so many times and Garbashu, uh, among other uh, government officials, uh, as, as mentioning and testifying to Nigerians that they even know the finances. So, like, I, I have made a lot of criticism in this respect, or a lot of clarion call to the government and uh, to the authorities concerned, that since you made mention that you know their finances, and you know the culprits, and you know their locations. So what are you waiting? Why can't you deal with them decisively? And um, why do you release uh, Kunene? Kunene is one of the arm, uh, 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 arm uh, transporters and arm managers and arm marketers and arm traders. He is very well known in the whole part of northern Nigeria, inclusive of areas of northeast, uh, northwest, and north central, uh, in the case of uh, uh, arm distribution, arm tra trading, and other things. So, but he was arrested, and uh, later, after two years, he was released. And immediately after his release, a lot of things started happening in part of Zamfara and part of Sokoto. That is what happened recently in uh, Bakura, which is neighbor of our local government. Our local government, of course, is in Sokoto. And then there are a number of uh, communities within the forest 
that is uh, between Talata Makara local government, Bakura local government, Shinkafi local government, Kaura Namoda local government, down to Zulmi and uh, some to some extent uh, Jibia Bazari in Kasana uh, neighboring uh, Bindi Magaji and uh, as well uh, Safi local government uh, neighboring Kankara and um, allied Sabwa Paskari and other uh, and notorious uh, flashpoints of all this criminality. So it is very clear that uh, uh, we and the question we are now asking is, do we really have a sovereign government? Do we really have a serious government? Do we really have a serious and committed government? And is government really ready to put the political and administrative will so that uh, all these things can be addressed accordingly? Uh, when we look at uh, other things that is happening in some other part of uh, 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 the Northwest, uh, this kidnapping, we only know when it happened in school, when many people are abducted, uh, or some of the uh, government institutions. But a lot of things happening in other communities, uh, uh, hundreds in, and um, uh, uh, number of communities are being destroyed in many parts of Kasana, many parts of Zampara, many parts of Sokoto, many parts of Niger, and alike. Uh, look at the number of children. A commissioner of information of uh, uh, Niger State was uh, abducted, and uh, he was released in less than five days. Today, as we are talking, the children between the age of four and uh, 12 from taking a uh, Islamic school, Islamic school, uh, I think um, if, um, if I'm right, they are above 100 number of days. And the children of uh, Germany also are in activity for almost uh, 50, above 50 days. And then there are other people that are in captivity in many other parts of the country, like in Futua and Kazana State, like uh, in Damusa. Even yesterday, there were demonstrations and protests in four local government areas uh, for the community members showing their grief. Uh, no, it's unfortunate that we have lost Mr. Ghetto there. Hopefully we're able to reconnect with him. Uh, we apologize for this, you know, occasional glitches. Um, Mr. Ghetto really is hitting the nail on the head regarding these things. And it, it puts me in a very sober mood because when I think about, you know, I love to put myself in the shoes of people and, you know, be, em be em empathic. And um, because it just gives you an insight into what exactly are these people facing? I, I take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper every day and they're keeping a toll of, you know, a daily count of how, how long people have spent in captivity regarding students who have been abducted. Um, for the report today, today, August um, 17th, um, Daily Trust reports that that children who were kidnapped in Salihu Tanko Islamic School in Tagina, which you just mentioned, yeah. have spent 79 days in captivity. Students who are abducted from the Federal Government College in Benin Yore have spent 62 days in captivity. Students abducted from that Bethel Baptist High School in Kujama. Remember, we've been talking about this, spent 44 days in captivity. It's really sad. I mean, on Sunday, we had the report. On Saturday, we had the reports that a Chibok girl has returned. She's, she's grown up. She's all grown up. She has a kid. Kids. She, she has two kids. And, it, you know, during the week, another Chibok girl returned with a husband. You know, it, it's just sad that it seems that the government is failing people. And he asked lots of questions. Do we really have a sovereign government? And, and I want him to come back. Let's, you know, rub minds on rhetorical questions he asked. You know, like, if the government keeps saying that they know who the terrorists are, they know their location, they know their, their financiers. So what are you doing with that information? Do you get intel to, to just have intel? Or do you get intel to proactively act and do something? You know... The government needs to do something. I mean, are we really watching what's happening in Afghanistan? These people subjugated the Afghans for a long time, ruining in the 1990s. And it took the you know, US intervention to come into the country and you know, suppress them. They ousted them, but they never left. They still stayed there. They continued to do the you know, bombings and attacks on the ground. And immediately the US troops pulled out. They, 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 they surfaced and have renamed the country. So the point is, when we look at the Afghan story, you know, it just... You can almost see parallels with what's happening in Nigeria. And if the government claims to know the facts about this terrorist, the question is, why are they stalling? Well, so, um, you know, there's certain things that I, I would rather not, um, sh certain thoughts I would rather not share, you know, on uh, live television. Um, so I'm going to go the regular, um, you know, safe route and, and just say that 
so, so one thing that I feel, you know, that the glaring part of this is that we have a lot of people who are in power that don't understand the reason that they took over that position, that took that position. The reason that they campaigned and they spent, you know, all, you know, possible No, they know forms. the reason, but it was okay, for well, the wrong reason. Well, yeah, for the wrong reason, but at the same time, um, when you've campaigned so, you know, much and you eventually get into that seat and you don't understand that it is your responsibility to protect lives and property, um, it hurts to see the level of, the, 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 the show of indifference, you know, to the lives and property of Nigerians. Um, that Nigerian lives can be in captivity for 70 days. And the president, regardless of whoever says, oh, maybe we should, you know, focus on other, you know, levels of governance, but, you know, he's still the president. The president himself doesn't, I don't know if there's any other people who are looking at, you know, are seeing it different from myself, but doesn't seem to be that bothered that there's Nigerians who have been in captivity for 70 days. And that includes the state governments and the local governments. Like who? This is the question that, who exactly is concerned? If you're saying 70 Nigerians, days, let's talk um, about the Chibok girls. They said okay, about 100 of them for, 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 for about six years good. now, since 2014. So who exactly is concerned that there are Nigerians that have been in captivity or can't even be found anymore for the last six years or for the last 70 days or for the last 66 days? Who exactly? Like, is there a person in Nigeria who is in a position of power. And then that includes every person who speaks for the presidency and the people who speak for the state governments. Like, I know you're doing your job as a spokesman, but is there any person who is really concerned that there are Nigerians who have been kidnapped and are, uh, you know, in, have been captive for 70 days? What terrorist group, what level of banditry gives you the capacity to hold people for 70 days and keep feeding them and making sure that they don't escape? Yes. It means that, you, I mean, you have the resources to keep people um, on the, in captivity for that long. How do governors and the president and everybody go to sleep every night and just wake up the next morning and go on like nothing's different? Oh, sorry, Gay. Let's throw these questions to Mr. Getsu, the security analyst who's back with us. Mr. Getsu. Seems to have lost him again. Sadly. Well, they, these are going to be the questions, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm going to take it back to something that I was uh, speaking about before, the fact that a lot of people have lost faith in the whole government and criminal justice system. And that's why they, you hear about reprisal attacks. Because if you trust that when, you know, uh, you know terrorist activity is carried out, bandits attack a community, if you trust that they will be arrested, and even when they're arrested, you trust that they will be sent to jail or they will be, you know, tried for their crimes, then you will not bother about reprisal attacks. Mm. Uh, Mr. Getso, uh, can you hear us now? Yes, of course, I'm with you. Welcome back. Please uh, go ahead. Um, we're, we're really just trying to make sense out of, you know, what the situation is in Nigeria with these kidnappings, um, the capacity of these kidnappers to hold people for this long, and the fact that we have a government in power that doesn't seem to be on its, on, on its feet or doesn't seem to be on the edge to ensure that these Nigerians are rescued? Well, uh, what is missing is uh, lack of uh, lack of patriotism and lack of passion from the people on the seat of power. And lack of patriotism and lack of passion from the people who are recruited uh, in, 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 the, in the services of uh, security. Like I mentioned, Nigeria made a mistake in the last 22 to 30 years. 30 years in terms of recruiting uh, personnel in the security uh, uh, operatives. Uh, these mistakes, among which are one, uh, since 22 years to 30 years to date, uh, what has been happening with the recruitment is, is uh, government is not recruiting the people who are interested in the job, but rather recruiting the people who have what is called long leg. Uh, if you go to the community you want to recruit, the white head will give you the name of his child or the name of his parent. A counselor will bring the name of the dog. Uh, a local government chairman will give the name of his children or his family alike. And then in any uh, recruitment, you realize that the, the general, the commanding officer of the Nigerian Defense Academy or the DSS or the police college, the AID, you have to go to the AID, the DID, or someone at the hierarchy before you get the job. So in the process, 22 to 30 years, Nigeria has been recruiting people that doesn't have interest 
they are only having the job because they want to have the security of the job. Not so, because Mr. they have Getso, passion Mr. or Getso. they have interest. See, Mr. Getzo, I believe that you really, you really um, hit the nail on the head there with your explanation. And this is something you say all the time, that the people who are in law enforcement lack the passion you know, and patriotism for the job. But don't you think it's appalling to see that people get into law enforcement simply to earn a living and not out of a, a need and a burden to serve? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you, when, you look at the, when you look at the what is happening presently, you realize that it is civilians that are chasing the military and the police, the DSS, because those in the field, the bandits, the Boko Haram, the Iswak, the Ansaru, are all type of criminals that you are taking. They are not professionally trained. And remember, our military personnel and other security operating DSS police, mobile police, they are professionally trained. And Nigeria sends imputed trillions of money to, 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 to train brigadiers, to train, uh, uh, to train AIGs, DIGs, uh, directors of the SSS, and so on and so forth. But these guys in the field, mm. when they came, they still chase them and kill them. Wow. So this gives you a clear message and a clear testimony that the guy is coming from the forest. They have little training, and, but they were able to pursue and uh, uh, prostrate all the efforts of our trained coach professionals. So, so that is giving you an answer, mm. and that is part of the justification of what I'm mentioning. Mm -hmm. the, the third issue is, these guys are coming out to, for, uh, they are ready to face the day. That is a criminal, the culprit. Okay. The bandit, the uh, all right, Mr. Getz, so, so, but so much. But the Nigerian military, they drop their gun and run. We have many instances of this. You have less than one minute all right, well, we we'll apologize for that. But really, um, so much insight there from Mr. Getzo regarding the fact that, you know, is there any problem in Nigeria that you can talk about without you having traces to unemployment? Because really, that's it. People do not have jobs. So they right. find wherever they can be plugged in to earn a living at the end of the day, no matter what it is, as long as you can get a salary. And if it's for yeah, a law obviously. enforcement role, just so you get a job, people are enrolling for the police, people are enrolling for the NDA, the this and that, just because they want to get a job. Not because they see the challenges in the country regarding security and really want to serve. Not but, because they want to get trained to be that, able to tackle that, you know, our security threat, just totally so they can agree. get a salary at the end of the day. I totally agree. And that, that is with regards to every you know, security agency in Nigeria, from police to the army, the navy, the air force, the NSCDC. A lot of these people who get into those positions are really just looking for employment. They don't care what it is. As long as I'm going to get paid at the end of the month, I'll you know take you know I'll take that, that offer. If you look at the thousands of people who apply to join the police everywhere, it's really not because they have a you know an interest in serving. It's it's looking it's a it's a job search. Um, there is that, but that also tells you that from the bottom, you know, to the you know from the top to the bottom, there is that same challenge because if you're recruiting people and you've gone through or you assess them, you've you put them through whatever tests that are necessary, you should be able to tell that this person really doesn't care that much about serving. Um, uh, and so it should, there are people that should be disqualified right from the first day that they try. Well, when but they have the obviously, connects, obviously they happen? don't. You know, and then whose responsibility should it be to have seen that, well, this process of recruitment is not working because everybody that we've recruited in the last five years doesn't seem to care much about serving. And, and yes. it's not you know, effective enough for the force. And you see that last point he mentioned about the directors and people in the higher ranks of management getting all the training, while the people who do the groundwork, people who are on the field, lack the international the, the knowledge of the international best practices to execute their job that really is saddening all right mr getzo mr getzo welcome back see i need to ask yeah. you this question because yes. um, mr question, getzo please hold on mr getzo mr getzo can you hear me yeah i can hear you so one question nigerians have at the back of their minds is this since the Boko Haram insurgency you know their first major attack in 2009 and how you know bandits keep attacking schools abducting children People still ask, why are schools still open? Is that, do you think that's a question we need to consider? Yes, absolutely. But before I answer that question, let me respond quickly to uh, some of the concerns you made mention. Okay. Uh, the, about the people on the authority, uh, the people uh, uh, in, in the field doesn't have uh, training. No. These people, they train, the Nigerian operatives, the security operatives, they train directly from the training institution. They send these guys to the field, so they don't have experience. 
they don't have interest on the job. And this government is imputing huge amount of resources for training. But the question, what is the quality of the training? Who are the trainers? Are they having equipment and gadgets to do the training? And many other questions. So coming back to why the schools yeah, are the school, school are still open. Yes, of course, the reason why the schools are still open is because the people on the authority, I'm not talking of the security operatives uh, uh, team, uh, management, no. Mm. I'm talking on the leadership, the local government chairman, the members of uh, state assembly, the governors, the members of national assembly, the senators, and the, uh, the ministers, among other head of parastatals at the federal and state level. They are not interested in, in governance. There is no element of good governance. So it is the issue of leadership now. We have people that their children are not in these schools. Remember, uh, I am very sure that some of the, your reporters have been to either Kagara or Kankara or JNKB with their videos, uh, video uh, uh, recording devices. You have recorded, you have seen the location, the, the, the building in the schools. I cannot even keep, uh, keep my, my dog in some of the schools. And most of these schools that where this thing happened, they are pilot schools. There are special schools as far as the state government is concerned. Even the, with the federal government, Benin Yaori is one of the special schools. Uh, it's, it's, it's the government. But when you look at the environment, I cannot even keep my dog. If I have a rat, I cannot keep it. If I have a snake, I cannot keep it there. If I have a monkey, I cannot keep it there. But that is where human beings are being trained. And the future leaders are being trained. So the issue is, do you even have what is called a school? I was a teacher for 16 years, and I know what it takes, what it is, and I'm an educationist uh, by profession to some extent, and I know I taught at the prim nursery, at the primary, at the secondary, at the federal college of education, the, the state polytechnic, and even at the university. So there is no institution of learning that I didn't taught, and I don't know what it's supposed to be. Do we have the facilities? Do we have the classrooms? Do we have the fence even in most of the schools? have broken, and government is not doing anything. Mm. All right. And I also put a blame on the Parent Teachers Association, because okay. they're supposed to serve as a pressure group that push the government to provide all these facilities. But some of the leadership of the Parent Teachers Association are also conniving with the management of the schools and the management of education at the Federal Ministry of Education, the State Ministry of Education, because most of them are the contractors themselves. So you, you don't, and at the same time, I am the contractor to fix a certain facility in school, but remember, my children is not in that school. Hmm. Remember, Nasser Ahmed El Fahid, the governor of Kaduna State, recently, in the recent time, he removed his children from the, 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 yes. the, the uh, public school where he took the, the child. So, hmm. and there is no explanation, no proof. That, I want to tell you that school is inside the city of Kaduna. And between that uh, school and the military formation is not up to two kilometers, the highest six kilometers. Between that school and Nigerian Defense Academy is not up to five kilometers. Between that school and the office of the GOC, that is a, a general commanding officer, general officer commanding, commanding the, 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 the zone, is not up to uh, five kilometers. And between that school to Jaji cantonment, military cantonment, is not up to 30 kilometers. So between that school and the state police command, is not up to four kilometers. But still, Nasir Erfai went and removed his child from that school, and there is no provision whatsoever for the protection of lives and properties, uh, of especially lives of children of other uh, people there. So, and uh, you cannot tell me one governor. Most of these governors, their children attend most expensive schools. Most of the permanent secretaries at the federal and state levels are something. Most of the directors, even in the education ministry, their children are not in public schools. So how do you expect them to fix these schools? And even the security operatives, their, their, their children, the their leadership of the security, uh, right from the, even the assistant inspector general, uh, sorry, assistant uh, superintendent of police, and the second lieutenant, as well as the uh, rank and file, uh, ordinary rank and file, even in the DSS and the police and others, they don't take their children into these public schools. So the, the children are not there. So they don't have passion for governance. They don't have interest. That is why I'm asking, do we really have a responsible government? Because you cannot have a responsible government 
uh, and um, will allow these things to continue to happen and to some extent some of these criminals are even given ultimatum to a sovereign state. That is one of the reasons why I always pose the question that is Nigeria is really a sovereign state? Do we really have a leadership? And it is the question of, as time goes on, all these reports that we are getting about abduction is only from schools. I want to tell you that the communities of Kankara, uh, Kankia, uh, uh, Dan Musa, Musa, uh, Musawa, Matazu, yesterday were in pro on protest. They blocked many roads in Katana. But government is not even, uh, does not even care about it. To show their grievances about the, uh, the level of criminality, a uh, level of uh, how their, their wives are being raped, children are being killed, uh, women are being uh, 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 um, uh, kind of kidnapped to the forest, uh, bandits will come and we use torchlight, see your wife, select the one he wants, he will take you to the forest, and then after seven days, he will bring it and take the other one. And you don't have anything to, 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 to say. Look at what is happening in Futua, Sabwa, Paskari, and Tanjui. Look at what is happening in Zaria. We have had argument with the uh, Commissioner of uh, uh, Internal Affairs and um, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Home, uh, Internal Affairs and Security. Security and, yeah, uh, someone number one. They have personnel everywhere in all other commissions, you know, other local government. But when you go out there, they are not there. Because I'm a practical person. I go to this field. I check practically. The security, the formations, they are saying, they are just there uh, in some places. And they are not doing anything. They always tell the community that we don't have instruction to face the criminals until we get directives. So people are being killed, and you are still saying you are waiting for directives. And we have had a statement from Mr. President, that is Mahmoud Buhari, saying, kill anybody you cited with AK-47. But we have records and evidences that these criminals pass through military formations and other checkpoints with their arms, with AK-47. They go to uh, nearby communities, they buy their social needs, and they go back to the forest, and nobody is chasing them. Nobody is killing them. So they are being cited with AK-47, AK-49, and other sophisticated arms. And the question is, those who have been presented by Nigerian police and Nigerian military, that they have returned arms to the government and they have surrendered. What provision have government done for them? And I, 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 I disputed all the governors that said they conducted dialogue. It's a lie. It's not true. I have my evidence. If they have their evidences to tell me that right, the dialogue happens, or there is any negotiation with bandits in Zamfara, in Katana, in Kaduna, in Sokoto, in whatever part of northern Nigeria, let them tender it. I have my evidences to tell them they are liars. The governors are not serious. The governors are telling lies. They are telling stories. Stories that have no backup. Right. So until and unless uh, uh, masses, uh, who I'm not advocating and I'm not calling for people to take arm and protect themselves, but it, it, uh, people are being pushed. It Mr. No Mr. Gatso, we'll people have to wrap up here. Purchasing arms because we have so many arms in the hand, in the wrong hands now, and government is not doing anything. Arms yeah. proliferation is one of the lucrative business in, in northern Nigeria, especially yeah, also and many parts of uh, south, 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 east and uh, some part of the southwest also. All right. So, which means... M Mr. Getso, uh, apologies, uh, we'll, uh, have to, we'll have to wrap um, up here. It means they will um, start chasing uh, one another, and then, probably, after the end of the... We have to learn lessons from what is happening. Yeah. Mr. Getso, can absolutely. you hear me? Um, you, Mr. Getso, you have made valid points. We've noted them. We hope the government is listening as well. And we thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. All right. Hopefully, the next time we speak with him, it has to be with something, you know, some good news. Maybe, I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's really draining, um, having to, you know, repeat these same things over and over and over I again. And, you know, like I was saying um, some time ago, that there's, there's not a lack of ideas on how to handle these things. There's just lack of interest, you know, really from the government. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving to Afghanistan. Um, or taking a conversation rather to Afghanistan and we're going to be joined by Paul Lejime, uh, international affairs uh, expert to share his thoughts on what the situation is over there. Stay with us.